Well, everyone, we got us a fat cat. A long fat cat. Take a look at him. Take a look at him. Oh, buddy. He's like, worry into me properly. Yeah. He knows we're recording now, so he's gonna he's gonna try his best to get yeah, away. He's also like, I don't want to be on camera. He's like, I'm trying to what? It's like my figure is not good for camera. It's like, hey, buddy, it's okay. Neither's mine. <laughs> oh, buddy boy. Okay. You wanna go to your papa? He's oh no, no he, he just went wants all down. the way across. Yeah. Now I'm covered in fur. See, Vega's is a cute animal, but. Fortunately, his uh, presence does not lead to worse health for you. Mm-mm, just a little. I'm a little allergic to kitties. So. Oh. Well, at least he hasn't uh, been uh, too bad on you. I have an air purifier in my room, and I vacuum regularly, and I take uh, Fonase on my leg rough, so I can get away with it. I just have to have eye drops in case I pet him and then accidentally touch my eyes, because my eyes will start itching. Right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. But, you know, there's uh, there's cute animals, but they slowly get worse for your health. And uh, those are being presented, uh, presented to us today by the one and only Casual Geographic. Now... This is a funny video title. Yes, it is. That's a great video title. <laughs> I was laughing at this when Nate first pulled it up. I was like, that's a good concept. <laughs> yes. So, because an animal can be cute as hell, but it can be very, very bad for your health. For mm. instance... There's some cute animals that can just straight up peel your face off. Yes. And there's also some animals that some people consider cute, but other people are like, ugh. For instance, you like snakes. Mm. And there's a lot of snakes that you look at and you're like, oh my goodness, look at that scaly boy. Yeah. Versus... There's even some spiders, like jumping spiders, I think are really cute. Versus Kate, who would look at a spider or a snake and yeah, would just be... No. It would, it was like, meh. You know? Yep. Uh, but also, I was thinking, like, there's some animals that are cute, but they carry diseases. Like That's true. You know, wild rats and mice. That's true, like, Technically, yeah. they're cute, but don't get near my food and stuff, man. I agree. Like, especially the mice that we have out here, because we live next to a field. Yeah, that'd be no bueno. But, yeah, cute animals, but they slowly get worse for your health. By Casual Geographic, uh, we're going to go ahead and just hop right in and see what animals he's going to list off for us. Shall we? Mm -hmm. Let's go. I think a common theme on his channel is cute animals being Satan serving, humanity haunting pretty... <laughs> that bird just shot upon that other bird. I think a common theme on his channel is cute animals... Uh... Animals being... Being... That penguin is just like, uh, is this okay? It, did this penguin like fuck over all these other penguins? Because it looks like it's not the first time he's been shat on. No, yeah, it looks like he's getting shit all over. Yeah, like all of a sudden, this bird's just this bird's just like, remember that time you you ratted me out? Yeah. Well, here's for you. Satan serving human. Oh. <laughs> He's like, he turned that dude's face into a modern art masterpiece. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's either that or they're making a weird-ass penguin porno, you know? <laughs> oh, God, why did you say that? It's like two penguins, one cup or something. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! Why? I don't fucking know. Oh! <laughs> unfortunate. You just had to put that thought in my head now. <laughs> Oh, that's... Oh, God. You know those moments where something is literally, like, seared into your brain like a branding iron on your ass? It's like you took psychic damage from hearing that. Oh, my God. Nate felt his, felt his wisdom safe and took 1d4 psychic damage from that one. Yeah. Dude, my wisdom rolls are now permanently, like, down by three. You have a permanent minus one. Yeah. <laughs> to any wisdom saving throw. Oh my because God. you've heard that uttered. Oh. 
Thankfully, I passed my saving through on that one, <laughs> so I didn't damage myself. Dick. <laughs> you dick. Merchants. And that's what this video is about. And the further we go, the higher your chances of being turned full time horizontal. Before I do. You fucked up! I don't think he, that guy has a tip of his finger anymore. I'm gonna just say this. When I call something Why a would you ever menace, that's poke not... towards a turtle's mouth? It just... It's actually a snapping turtle. Mm -hmm. When you know it's a snapping turtle. That's just me using hyperbole to season a sentence. I'm not actually trying to get y'all to go out and drop kick an otter or something. Ultimately, these animals are just trying to survive and are doing what comes naturally, so you can't really judge them by human moral standards, even, even though that's Bonk. literally what I'm about to do. And starting off, <laughs> this is not your average mouse. First of all, it's a straight up carnivore. In their defense, that's not exactly crazy. Squirrels have been known to raid nests and eat the baby birds inside. Yeah. But no other rodent is more of a meat eater kinda, than the grasshopper mouse. Kind of messed up. I didn't know that. Yeah. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, deers do the same thing, man. If a oh, baby, fuck. if a bird falls out, a deer sees it on the ground. Deer's just like, free protein. Nom nom nom. Yeah. I thought deers were herbivorous. Oh no, they're they are omnivorous. It's just their diet is predominantly vegetation and berries and shit. Hmm. House and its grocery list can include anything from insects, worms, and spiders. To mantises, scorpions, and desert centipedes, aka the same cursed crawly that nearly unsubscribed mouse. Coyote Peterson from existence. Yeah. Grasshopper mice will even murk and eat snakes. Basically, you remember that episode where Jerry took PEDs and nearly put Tom in a tombstone? <laughs> I do remember. They have memed the fuck out of that clip. It's a grasshopper mouse times a thousand. This mighty mouse even developed. Also, I like that he mentioned uh, Coyote Peterson. I've watched that centipede video like three times. Oh, yeah. I watched, he's... like, all his sting videos a lot, plus his other videos. Dude, that sometimes. centipede one, holy shit. Yeah, like, the, the way it curls up its skin as it bites him is just yeah. like, oh, the one that The one that I knew would be bad, and I'm glad that he at least had protection for, was the alligator snapping turtle. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, I knew that if he went in, just his arm, he could potentially lose his yeah, arm. Yeah, no, he's not that, he's not stupid. yeah. He's, That's why he had like he's the crazy a little him. bit. He's a little crazy, but he's not stupid. Fair enough. <laughs> a crippling venom of ops like the Arizona bark scorpion. Not only can they tank hits that would flatline animals a hundred times their size, this rogue rodent shuts down the pathways the toxin takes to cause pain. Meaning, this mouse essentially Damn. evolved to be impervious to the pain caused by venom. It can we need so some of those. Yeah, like, okay. So in that case, he's just like, oh, I'll go fuck. We need some of those around here. Why? Because, you know. Fuck some of the, like fuck some of the copperheads that are in this area. I guess. I mean, feel to be honest, I feel like we'd have a lot less mice problems if we had a copperhead that lived out in the field out back. True, true. It's gonna come from a scorpion. That's not even the only thing about them. These mice stalk and hunt their prey exactly like cats. This homicidal hamster will even howl after catching a body to mark their territory. Take a listen. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those videos. It sounds like a kid screaming in a horror movie. <laughs> I wish I could maintain it, but my throat's kind of Is fucked. that the same mouse they use for the meme where the guy's just like, ah! Yeah, that... Ah! <laughs> there's a, it's like, there's a new apex predator on the prowl. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Tea kettle. So imagine being a scorpion. Tea kettle mess. Millions of years of evolution. Your ancestors were apex predators, and you have biological warfare on your side. All that for a pint-sized wear mouse to be your downfall. <laughs> not even other mice are safe. Grasshopper mice regularly eat other rodents, and cannibalism is not off the table. In fact, there was a story of a scientist keeping a grasshopper mouse and making the mistake of leaving it alone with a lab rat five times its size. In a few minutes, he walked away and returned. There was one less mouse and the number one suspect feeding on the carcass. Proof that even the most innocent-looking platter can serve death. Especially since the predator with the highest body count is not what you'd expect. No other mammal catches more bodies than the Etruscan shrew. They're one of the smallest yes, mammals shrew. alive and they weigh less than two skittles. The shrew is so small that the only way they can survive is by killing more prey than any other animal. Basically, if this candy-sized carnivore doesn't eat <laughs> twice as... Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Look at his cute nose. Big long snout. Yeah, he's like, ask me a show. That's the reason why... Uh, in in Angry Beavers, I was always confused why the shrew, uh, the truck driving shrew, I forget his name, why why he was so freaking like dangerous. 
and was like beating the shit out of everybody he came across. For some reason I don't remember him. Yeah. Like he, the only episode oh, no, that he actually... was the one who stole Norbit's girlfriend, remember? Like mm-hmm. Norbit had a girlfriend and then uh all of a sudden uh the uh, uh Norbit had a girl had a girlfriend and everything was good. And then all of a sudden the shrew came in and he was like, Hey baby, you wanna you wanna hop in my uh my eighteen wheeler? And then she did and she dumped da- she dumped uh, Norbert for for the shrew. And then later on, the shrew dumped her because she tried to force him into being like a more stay at home kind of guy, you know, you know, settle down and all that. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, baby. The only thing I value is my ba the only baby I have in my life is my eighteen wheeler. And everywhere we go, we go together. <laughs> and then she's like, But I thought what we had was maybe it was fun. But I'm moving on. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't know. It was. <clears throat> I don't remember anything from that show except for the spleen. I also remember, like, when they were, whenever they both were in trouble, they would both go back and forth, like, eh, 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 eh. oh I god. I don't remember that really. Also, Richard Horowitz. I mean, come on, dude. One of the most iconic voices ever. Uh, I watched that show way before I was ever aware of his name, too. Like, or, or the, that was him, you know? It's like, I, I basically, like, knew of, it, knew of him originally due to Vader Zim, obviously. Well, I remembered him from, like, Angry Beavers, and then when I heard him in, uh, see, there were other ones, uh, there were other ones that he was in, and I recognized, I was like, hey, that's Daggett. Mm. Oh, and I was like, hey, that's Zim. And it, it's strange how that happens. Anyway, sorry. Food every day to fuel its metabolism, they'll essentially freeze to a flat line. So the Etruscan shrew has to end a life every two hours or so, and they hunt by biting their prey through their head to disable it, and then tearing it apart before another starving shrew can get to it. And just for reference, if I had to eat twice my weight in food every day, I'd be scarfing about 680 Big Macs every 24 hours. Damn. And even then, at least I don't have to hunt the burger. By the time I get to the drive through the job's already done. But the shrew does have a weapon, and it's being one of the very few mammals on Earth to weaponize venom. According to studies, some shrews are toxic enough to delete 200 mice, and while they're too small to turn a human to a hashtag, it's still capable of causing pain and allergic reactions. Not only that, but some shrews are able to catch a calorie come up underwater, Holy so some are able shit. to smell out prey even while being completely submerged. Yeah, they're a whole <laughs> mint-sized menace, but too there small to be a legit threat to us. That's not going to be true for some of the animals like coming. Pudgy. And up next, this bird probably looks no different from something you'd expect oh. in the garden. Except it's only found in the islands of the Galapagos. And to survive, they've come up with some nasty tricks. They've been nicknamed Darwin finches since they actually helped prove Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Long story yeah. short, different finches ate different foods and so developed different size and shaped beaks. One finch evolved to finesse an easy meal by pecking at the skin of bigger birds and drinking the blood that spills out. Whoa. That's kind of fucked up. Fucking real. Yes. The Scientists vampire believe bird. up to 10% of this flying leech's diet is seabird blood, and their favorite victim is a bird called the booby. Don't laugh, it's not funny. <clears throat> yes, it is. Yes, it is. I've literally censored boobies and things by putting boobies over them. Specifically the blue-footed ones. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not funny. Popular opinion says that it started with the finches picking parasites off the birds, but after realizing they could live off the marinara that would often leak out, the vampire finches started turning the birds into booby blood banks. They literally became everything they sought to destroy, and they're skilled enough to know how much damage to do to get a ragu reward without doing too much and losing a future victim. Yeah, these birds drink nothing but blood, which they kind of have to since fresh water in the Galapagos is in less supply than lawyers in heaven. But it also means that even though they can fly, Arab would be completely useless to them. But not to you, because Arab's flavor pods use scent flavors to convince your brain you're drinking whatever pod you chose. Just fill up the bottle, pull the pot to uh, the and drink your flavor. Sponsorship. That can be anything from blueberry. Right, random. I mean, it's a good sponsorship, especially for, especially to for peach, casual. To cherry, to cucumber. Or dirty pennies, you know, if you happen to be this finch. My personal favorite so far has been mango passion fruit, and you can't see it from here, but this it's is random cherry. to me because it's the first time I've ever heard of it. Oh, no, I've seen these before. <laughs> they're, they're pretty cool. And remember, there's no calories, no sugar, just elite gray matter gaslight. Because fun fact, 80% of taste is actually dependent on smell. Yep. Which is great, because although I've never had a problem getting enough water, huh. I personally have been trying to cut down on all the juices and sodas and stuff. And Arab's a great way of weaning yourself off. So it's literally just something you smell while you drink water? Yes. Interesting. Basically, it's an aromatic that permanently, like, attaches itself to the water that you have. And you basically just, like, pop the top, drink... 
and then when you drink, it basically adds in an aromatic flavor like thing to it, and basically it makes your makes your bot or makes your mind think you're drinking something sweet when in truth you're not. Hmm. It's the same principle as those uh those like uh scent packets that they used to do for food back in the day. It was basically like salt. You'd be like, okay, I want this to, I want this uh, salad to taste more sweet. So basically, you'd put it on it, and basically, it was a a thing that made it taste more sweet, made it taste like caramel, made it taste like these other things, and it works. It works. It's amazing how that stuff works. Hmm. Now those lo- eventually lost favor. I'm not sure why, uh, but this right here. I mean, I've heard about this, and I love these, man. My mom uses them sometimes. I've gotten a lot better at it now, but when I was just starting, AirUp was the perfect failsafe. And if you think it would be for you, make sure you check out AirUp and their assortment of flavor pods using the link in the description. Use the code CASHGEO15 for 15% off. And like I always say, stay hydrated, my friends. I may actually try that when I get paid, because... All right. I don't know. It sounds like it could possibly help me out. Hey, man, if it does, all the better, right? So like, I drink water, but I'm, I'm always forcing myself to drink it. Like, I don't enjoy drinking it. I just well, make myself. that's why I supplement it with Gamer Subs, <clears throat> because it, it helps with the flavor. But again, Gamer Subs, it's got, where it's got caffeine in it, it brings you up. Whereas, mm. if I don't want that feeling, I mean, I'm sort of SOL. Mm. I mean, I, I know that there's Mio or whatever, but I don't know. Mio's just not my, Mio's not my thing. But that, you know, air up, I'm, I'll probably give that a shot too, see how it does. Give more boobies and free mammograms. Not only do they grief bosom birds, but finches will often roll eggs out of nests and crash them in the rocks just for some easy protein. They're not even the only birds in that kind of timing. The New Zealand Kia will use that Swiss Army yeah. knife nose to cut into sheep and eat the fat right off their backs. And sometimes Ooh, they freak the sheep out so much. The they fucking fuck. Australia, dude. Easy protein. Or, fucking New Zealand and Australia. I think that one sounds scarier than just getting your blood drink. Well, yeah, because getting your blood drained... Imagine something just, like, eating your fat. Well, like, <laughs> imagine looking down and seeing, like, a little, like, peck right here. Like, a little like a little divot in your skin. Like, oh, damn. Oh, when did I get bit? Mm-hmm. Shit. Versus literally, like, a hook being dragged into your skin and pulling yeah, your like skin back. Peeling a big chunk of you off. You're like, oh! Bro's in that kind of timing. The New Zealand Kia will use that Swiss Army knife of a nose to cut into sheep and eat the fat right off their ah. backs. And sometimes they freak the sheep out so much they eat themselves off a cliff trying to get away. But at least the Kia and the Vampire Finch are only harmful to your mental. From here on out, that is the last time that statement will be true. Because this live-action plush toy is also on the short list of venomous mammals. The slow loris is a Southeast Asian oh, primate yeah. armed with toxins that can yeah, do I've heard about real that. damage to a human. They have a gland on their arm that produces a chemical that becomes highly toxic when mixed with saliva. So when this imitation lemur sees you and puts its hands up, it's not a sign of surrender. It's a promise to ascend you. We talking straight soul <laughs> eviction. In 2012, a biologist was bitten by a slow loris, and this was him after one hour, and this was Buddy after an hour and a half. Damn. Since the toxins contain chemicals similar to cat allergens, this venom monkey can trigger anaphylactic shock in people, making it the first animal here that can perform landscape work on your family tree. I guess that's why if you ever deal with these things, have an adrenaline, uh, an adrenaline needle on you. An epinephrine needle, yeah. yeah. Have an epinephrine, an EpiPen on you. We used to think this malicious Muppet used venom against predators, but it turns out it's for friendly fire. They usually use it in fades with other lorises, and the flesh melting toxins can cause necrosis, meaning the loser loris can lose an eye, a toe, their scalp, and even part of their face. It's so bad that one of the most common causes of loris life retirements is getting bit by a rival. An eight year study done on about 80 slow lorises found that over 20% of them were seriously maimed in conflicts, with some missing eyes, ears, fingers, toes, and more. It's nasty work, and it puts the slow loris on the very short list of animals that use venom against their own kind. And it's no coincidence that one of the others is next. Two things about platypuses to They're public know. Them. Yes, they are. Duck bill platypus. One is at about six pounds and less than two feet long. They're way smaller than you think. And two is that they're violently venomous. Males have an ankle spur that they use in fights, and like the loris, the consequences of losing are incredibly painful. In 1991, Australian veteran Keith Payne was struck by a platypus, and in his own words, the immediate pain was far worse than getting struck by shrapnel. And it only Damn. got worse. The excruciating pain didn't go away after a month, even after he was shot up with morphine. And just how much pain are we talking? Well, according to him, just the weight of a warm towel on the sting caused incapacitating agony. 
even 15 Ooh. years after he claimed to still be in discomfort and this guy wasn't sweet or nothing he actually earned the highest honor of the british armed forces for his performance in the vietnam war same guy apparently got folded by a beaver otter cosplaying as a duck <laughs> hey because platypus venom manipulates nerve cells to trigger pain in a way that can have you down horrendous for weeks and not even enough morphine to roofie or rhino can bail you out that's how you know perry had love for the doof he could have had a pharmacist every flavor of up if he wanted to that's why if you see two male platypi fighting you'll often see the loser spend days rolling around and scratching that's a platypus in crippling agony and you can expect Damn. the same symptoms if you f around and find out with the next animal even though it's barely an inch long most people know why playing with a portuguese man of war oh, is yeah. oh you fucked up if you play with one of them things no. you fucked up good you night you don't play with anything from the ocean for your health it's like these idiots that are just like look at these cute little the, octopus i found as they this, hold a blue ring i was gonna say you deserve to get you deserve to like lose your tongue yeah if you're that we've stupid. already mentioned darwin once in this video now let's mention the other context that darwin gets brought up in involving awards up. yeah playing with a portuguese man of war is bad for your health you heard me say most the man of war is notorious yeah. for excruciatingly painful stings that they inflict on thousands a year not only can it cause nasty welts oh, like this god dang dude it's like you got acid thrown on your arm Jesus. yes in worst case scenarios it can trigger severe allergic reactions that can block your airways and suffocate you most people know not to touch them but a lot of those same people would do this yeah no. you don't mess with that Whoa. either i always forget about them until I see him again, and I'm just like, that's, that's an, You idiot. That is a, uh, extraterrestrial nope right there. Yeah, that's a big fuck no, dude. This, this is Glaucus Atlanticus, and more specifically, it's a tiny sea slug nudibranch. And what these boneless snails do is steal poison from other animals like anemones by eating them and storing the toxin in those weird fingertips growing out of their back. It's cultural appropriation, but with poison, and the Glaucus does it to the man of war. Which is why even though a two-inch Glaucus is an overachiever, holding one and getting stung can lead to nausea, vomiting, allergic reactions, and you guessed it, Death. pain. In mm -hmm. fact, many think because the poison they steal is so concentrated, their sting is actually more powerful than the jellyfish understudy they take it from. Moral of the story, this is what it looks like to put a dent in your family. <laughs> Idiot. You're a moron, you deserve it. His bloodline. Pro tip, if an animal's that small and goes out of its way to be seen, touching it's a great way to see your ancestors. I couldn't find a case of someone being seriously hurt by this tiny assault slug, so it's another example of an animal being too small to truly punish ignorance as often as they could. Completely different from the animal up next, because real talk, if you haven't seen them in person, you would not believe how big they actually get. We all know Steve Irwin, may God rest his soul. And his son and shadow clone, Robert Irwin. Just like his father, Robert got the same animal lover's gene, but there is one animal he's terrified of, and you probably never guess it. According to him, the animal that scares him the most and has the most smoke for him. It's crazy, right? Yeah. That's a wombat. Wombat. And yet, they... <laughs> Wombats are terrifying. Well, I mean, they are very, very big. Well, yeah. Like, they're, they're very, very cute, but obviously they they're kind of like little bears, you know? Yeah, they can get vicious when they need to. And you don't have to do much to get them angry. You really do get that big. And in the words of the spawn of khaki animal Jesus, crocodiles are apparently easier to work with than wombats, since wombats are bloodthirsty psychopaths. And while the <laughs> that picture with the, with the phrase bloodthirsty psychopath. easier to work with than wombats. It's just too good. Wombats like, <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, little boy? Don't you like wombats? Aren't, Aren't we, we cute? fucking cute? Don't, don't we make, make you go? Ah! <laughs> Tell you what, if you don't come up with a reason why you don't like wombats, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to murder your entire fucking family. Yep. And while he probably was exaggerating a little, wombats still ain't the ones to play with. At 25 miles per hour, wombats are fast enough to catch a ticket in a school zone and more than fast enough to catch you off guard. They have a tough, cartilage reinforced butt that they use to crush the skulls of their enemies against their burrows. Yeah, getting your life subscription terminated through twerking is a possibility if you're- <laughs> Yes! Yes it is! I just can't take them seriously enough to be scared of them. <laughs> like, they're so cute and round. Up to a wombat. He's scratching his butt on the fence. <laughs> yeah. Mm, 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 mm. 
Absolutely. They have jaws more than capable of tearing chunks out of your ankles and cats, which is what these furry bowling balls usually go for. Victim Carrie Evans was hospitalized with over 20 bites and lacerations Damn. after she was mauled by the evil bulking twin of the Quokka. And in 2020, a family nearly got squad wiped by a wombat after the one they were raising for a TV show turned on them, mauling his owner and handing out work to any kid that tried stepping in. Before one killed it with an axe. Damn. Without prejudice. Buddy almost folded four generations of people, and it took a whole axe to get him to act right. And that's not even mentioning the- and By acting right, it meant killed. Yeah. The damage an angry fur meatball can do to your car. Moral of the story, if anyone in this man's bloodline don't rock with him, neither do I. The problem is, 99% of the population rocks with pandas and forgets it's still a bear that was made after the printer ran out of color. Yeah. It's still a bear, and you can have a panda bear, a yogi bear, or nose candy bear. If it ends in a B-E-A <laughs> bar, you'll be less <laughs> <laughs> Freaking love that. That's one of the best commercials ever. Yeah. <laughs> Just the... The whole like uh, freaking spin kick that the bear does, it just looks so good. <laughs> oh shit, that's Anna Ferris. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that, that's, damn. Or nose candy bear. <laughs> or the sloth bear. You can brought up the sloth bear, those things are deadly. Yeah. If it ends in a B -E -A -R -E -A. I also love that they use the Ed Ed Nettie. Subloa! Yeah. Last seen in an ER, if you even get that far. <laughs> so fun oh, fact, look. gorillas have a stronger bite force than grizzly bears and can crack a coconut, and that's because they spend so much of their time crushing vegetation. As bamboo merchants that commit 16 hours a day to binging it, giant pandas might have the most underrated bite in the entire animal kingdom. A study was done comparing the bite force of carnivores relative to their body size using a value known as the bite force quotient. African lions were given a bite force quotient of 124. The jaguar, believed to be pound for pound the strongest cat, earned a 137. And while being smaller than both, African painted dogs flex the bone crushing 142. And where did giant pandas fall? With a BFQ of 151, giant pandas scored a bronze medal on the bite force scale, mm. only behind the least weasel and an assault and battery happy looty tune. That's <laughs> <laughs> on the bite hey, is that scale, the... only behind the least weasel and an assault and battery happy looty tune. Tasmanian devil. Yeah, they do have the strongest jaws in the world, wow, pound for pound. That's strong enough to rip flesh, tear tendons, and shatter bone. The thing is, pandas have all the tools of a predator, but with gerbil software. But even though this giant cow rabbit doesn't know how to kill, they can be persuaded into trying, and it's usually in zoos. In 2006, a wasted tourist had a chunk of his calf ripped off by a pissed off panda after he tried to pet it. In 09, a tourist fell into an enclosure and also paid a calf tax. Later the same year, another tourist managed to fall into an enclosure and the barcode bear nearly turned him into a serial number on a police report, ripping off parts of his foot and elbow. And in 2015, Guan Huan Shi sued the government and won for over $80,000. The reason was because officials had chased a giant panda onto his land and a generationally heated bear crushed oh! Holy crap. Juan's leg like a celery stick. And my personal favorite story. A man tried wrestling a biracial black Air Force to impress a woman and appropriately got partially handled. He wasn't hurt, but the bear bodied him and even shredded his pants in the process, which was the closest he'd get to foreplay that entire day. It's no secret there's no end to the copious amounts of bull effery in the ocean, but there are still some animals people let slide especially if they've been in a movie. One of these fish can do you dirty. Yeah, this is one of the biggest, like, lies that a film has ever done. Clown and this fish? time, the clown's not it. The regal blue tail no. is actually oh, venomous. It's Dory. Okay. With caudal spines sharp enough to slice open skin. And with yes. Mm. Uh, that's the thing. It, uh, it originally, no, the thing with the, the biggest lie about the clownfish is that the clownfish is able to change its sex. So, after, yeah, yeah, after Marlon's, you know, I forget her name. What, uh, what was her name? The one that uh, Marlon had the kids with and everything, the uh, the mother of Nemo. After after she died and Nemo was born, Marlon would have changed sex and would have then basically been like been able to like birth more children. Hmm. Yes, so. Hate to say it, but that's that's one of the big lies about that. But then also Dory, Dory turns out much like the woman who voiced her, is an absolute freaking monster. <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of ironic that Ellen DeGeneres voiced Dory, and Dory is, and Dory is like hands down one of the worst like 
one of the worst fish that you could run into. Probably not as bad as the stonefish, at least. Well, no, of course not. But you would. But the thing is, the stonefish. That's like, technically sharks are also fish. So. Well, but that's the thing. Yeah. We we know to beware of stonefish. We know to beware of sharks. We don't know a fucking thing about be wearing a fucking dory. True. Yeah. Until just now, I didn't actually realize that it was a venomous fish. Yeah, and just <laughs> like now, we didn't realize that Ellen DeGeneres was a vicious. <laughs> <laughs> They'll whip their bodies from side to side. It's like a junkie waving a broken bottle at you, and the deep lacerations it can cause are almost guaranteed to get infected. And thanks to a certain Pixar movie, there's at least one kid out there that got a bacterial infection just because Ellen DeGeneres played a fish well. Yeah. Not only really that, but the blue tang is toxic to humans and can cause ciguatera poisoning to the people that eat it. Yep. An even worse mistake when people try it with the next animal. Because the cute derp guppy is yeah. one of the most poisonous things alive. The tetrodotoxin in one puffer fish can bury 30 people. It's about 1,200 times more toxic than cyanide, and there's no actual antidote. No, nope. All that and Mrs. Puff's That's ex why, like, stinky. even the really professional, like, puffer fish chefs, you know, that know how to prepare them. It's like, I still don't think I really ever have that much of a... I don't have faith in it. Like, uh need to try it just because i'm like it's kind of like gambling in my opinion i'm like yes you're like increasing your odds as high as you can by getting it from a professional chef but still like why the odds are never zero yeah like why bother you yeah know? and for me i look at this and I'm, all of a sudden i just hear bull mm -hmm. bull considered a delicacy the fugu blowfish is a prized dish in Japan, but it's also Russian roulette because if the chef misses by even a tenth of an inch, it's the customer that gets cooked. Here's what would happen if you got poisoned. In about 10 minutes, your mouth would go numb and you would start to feel dizzy and unreasonably tired. You'd get an overwhelming headache to go with nausea and it'd slowly get harder and harder to breathe. Eventually, you'd get so exhausted you'd fall asleep and likely never wake up. Damn. And until then, you would have been conscious for everything. It's just that you'd be paralyzed and unable to talk or move. The only thing people could do to save you is pump your stomach, put you on life support, and God on speed dial. It's said that up to 100 people get flatlined by Fugu a year, and most of that are people that try it at home. People are idiots. Mm -hmm. Which means by the time they realize they messed up, they can't run, call, or even scream for help. All they can do is struggle to get air and watch everything turn black like the end of Sopranos. But not even fish fentanyl has a higher body count than the last animal. Oh. People think snails are cute, yet snails are partially responsible for crossing 200,000 names off the census a year. Yeah. Especially the cone snail. Schistomyosis is a parasitic disease caused by worms with millions affected right now. And those worms are released by snails. The sickness is most common in tropical third world countries with limited access to clean fresh water. With about 700 million people living in at-risk areas, it's one of the most devastating parasitic diseases of all time, only second to malaria. And even if snails aren't the primary suspects, Damn, I have not heard about this. Bug, at the very least, they're accomplices. Now you see why folks almost put Gary on a shirt. Mad snail disease wasn't a joke. But that's gonna do it for this video. Be sure to follow my TikTok and Instagram for more consistent content as you wait for the next video. Check out my book, 100 Animals That Can Effing End You. You might just see some of the guys from <laughs> today on there. If you'd like to further support this channel, becoming a patron on Patreon earns you access to exclusive content, videos before I post them, and you can even help vote on what I cover in future videos. Other than that, make sure you drink water, hug your parents. Yes, parents, we're inclusive now. And I'll see y'all <laughs> in the next one. As long as y'all don't do something like this, P please don't. I please. So. No. <laughs> yeah, platypuses may be dangerous, but they are super cute. They are. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It's like, to be honest, like, that's one of the few animals that, like, I think... You know how, like, uh, lots of animals are drawn in cartoons to be cuter than they even are in real life? Yeah. I think the platypus is actually cuter in real life than it's drawn. I a think lot. so too. Well, no, because a lot of people from our generation, the platypus, the number one that we associate with it is Psyduck. Psy. Duck. I, I've always just considered Psyduck to be a duck. No, Psyduck's based on a platypus. Is he? Yes. Does he have a flat tail? Uh, let's see. He's got a tail though. He's more closely related to a platypus because, you know. I never thought of him as a platypus, personally.
Eh. Ah. Resembling a duck or a bipedal platypus. The, the one that initially comes to mind for me is Perry the platypus. Ah, uh, that Phineas and Ferb was never something I got into. I just heard of Perry. I had two. I didn't really get into the show either. I just heard about some of his shenanigans you know, for people. Well, he's a secret agent. I know mm -hmm. that. Just from watching it in passing whenever my nephews had it on. And, of course, you know, uh, Doofenshmirtz. Also, I did tune in whenever, like, the Top Gear crew voiced characters in it for, uh, like, a, for, like, an F1 race that was happening. And it was, it was actually pretty damn funny. Even though you could tell that there was stuff that they wanted to say, but they couldn't because it was Disney, so go figure. But, alright. Anyway. Those were cute animals that, uh, but they slowly get worse for your health. So, yeah, very cute. Also, uh, you going to leave a like on that. And, Yet uh, again, I'm glad some of the scariest ones at least live in the ocean where I don't have to go. <laughs> yeah, because Nick avoids the ocean like the plague. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and after seeing this, I can see why. Anyway. <laughs> Even the beach is suspect, man. It like, can be. I. You have to be careful where you're walking and stuff, and considering most people walk around on it without shoes on. Yeah. I mean, you could walk around on it with shoes on, but you're going to get sand in your shoes. But, like, you could easily step on, like, a washed up, like, one of those little, whatever they're called, little angel-looking mofos that are... I've, I've found one of them. I found one of them one time, and I picked it up with a little stick, and I, like, flung it back into the ocean. Oh, the tide probably just washed it back up somewhere else after a while, though. Probably. But then you can also uh, easily step on some transparent jellyfish that are really hard to see if you're not careful as well. Because they yeah. just look like bubbles on the sand at first. But in my experience, it's never happened. And I've heard of it happening to people. Uh, well, that's the thing. I've heard of a lot of things happening to people. But I, myself, have never... It's never happened to me. And I've never seen it happen myself. Doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. But, you know... I've seen shark. I've seen a shark attack. It wasn't on a person, but it was at an aquarium in uh, in Florida, and basically the shark uh, turned its head into the glass and it hit its head on the glass and then it started attacking the glass and then it went away. Oh, dude, I would have shit everywhere. Thankfully, the glass is the glass is like so I've been to stupid the... thick. I've been to a couple aquariums and I've seen sharks in person, but thankfully they were all just bleeping along. So, yeah, this one I'm not yeah, sure. If a what shark it was. actually hit the glass when I was in there. I would shit everywhere and run out. <laughs> like, Fair fuck enough, that man. Fair enough, but it, that happened, and I said to myself, "This is like, the, like." I, I, said to I myself, even understand that that glass is thick enough that that shark's not getting through it, but just. The sudden, like, jump scare to me that that would cause from the shark is what, like, I understand I would still be totally safe at the aquarium. It, just, it would still scare the fuck out of me, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> scared the shit out of me, too, dude. I mean, if I saw it's, that. It's, for me, that's the equivalent of people who are scared of spiders and then a spider, like, drops down on its web, like, right in front of your face. You know, that's what that would be for me. Like, I would scare the poop out of me. Yeah, true, <laughs> true. But anyway, uh, yeah. That's going to do it, everyone. Till next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Take care, everyone. Peace.